Ladies and gentlemen, chess is a pretty tough game. And all of us are trying to improve at it in some capacity. In this video, I will be showing you the secrets to getting a chess elo of approximately 1200. I'm going to be playing three games against volunteers, shout out to them, very, very brave. One is rated around 1000, one is rated around 1200, and one is rated around 1400. My reasoning for that is that you have to be able to beat the players underneath you in elo consistently enough, and you have to be able to get points off of people above you. Because the truth is if you're 1200, that's a rating range of about 1000 to 1400, and you need to adapt your play to all of those different styles. So let's jump into today's games, and uh, I will be playing certain openings that I recommend in my courses if I have a chance. Uh, and obviously I will be using methodology and thought process and all that those types of things uh, from my middle games masterclass as well as my intermediate course. Free samples of both. Link is in the description. Uh, let's jump into the first game. This is Blitz. Uh, and I, I, I did this specifically because... I, I didn't want to make like a 40 minute video, so these games will be a little bit faster and then I will analyze them, but you should play 10 or 15 minute games to improve. Okay, so at the 968 level, let's assume you know nothing about chess. I imagine we're gonna get a London because it's one of the most popular openings. I'm just, and there it is. I'm responding to a Queen's Pawn uh, with D4, D5. And you don't need like a bulletproof London methodology uh, when you're 900. Of course, I'm 2768. I'm actually exactly 1800 points above my opponent uh that, well, sorry that, that you didn't click on this video to hear me flex knight f6 is always a good move and when you are playing queen's pawn positions what you need to remember is the best friend of your d pawn is your c pawn but i'm 900 okay right i'm 900 maybe i'm 1200 maybe i'm 1100 i i don't i don't necessarily remember that so I'm not even gonna play the opening fully accurately. This is not good. Your D and C pawn should go together, but let's just assume that you're not like a super tryhard in the opening. Let's just follow good development principles. So um, let's uh, let's uh, pin the knight to the queen, and we're gonna get our light squared bishop out before we finish the development of our dark squared bishop. All right, let's play E6, and life is good. Now, obviously when you're playing uh, speed chess, you don't want to fall behind too much on the clock. I'm okay doing that, obviously, because, you know, I'm going to win. Uh, but uh, bishop d6 is a good move. So we finished our development, more or less, and now we want to castle, probably. Castle pretty quickly. Uh, white should respond, yes, that's actually exactly the right move. And now I'm going to castle. And okay, I have a completely reasonable position after seven moves. Now the game is going to be about decision making. When are we going to trade uh, pieces? When are we going to trade pawns? A lot of chess is played... Uh, with the physical pieces, and a lot of it is played on the empty square. So that move is made. And the thought process should be, what is the idea of that move? Do I have any checks, captures, or attacks? And then how do I improve my position? That move is attacking that. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I can take a few things, but there's no reason to right now. I think, let's just keep it simple. Like, I don't need to overthink this. Just rook b8. Yeah, I mean, could I have had, like, some better flashy move? Maybe I could have went knight a5, which simultaneously attacks and defends, but there's nothing wrong with this move. This, like, there's no... The game will not be won or lost based on the move rook to b8, right? Uh, and if you're 1200, you need to slowly outplay a 1000 and a 1100 pretty consistently. Like, you've got to be able to beat these people 7 out of 10 times, maybe 8 out of 10 times, because if you lose to them, you're going to lose a lot of rating. Uh, my opponent is thinking. My opponent really shouldn't overthink. They got to develop their bishop and castle. Now, depending on what type of opening people play, like in this case, the London system, people are going to be losing games at a slower rate. The, the London is very solid. Like this move is just trying to put the knight into the center. Um, you can take this, but it's defended. You can take this, but it's defended. Now, can I take this? Yes, but if I take like this, I walk into a fork. Does that mean I therefore need to take like this? Not necessarily, uh, but uh, is it better than taking with the knight? Yes. Do I need to give up the bishop? No, I mean, I would argue, to be honest with you, you really shouldn't be giving up a bishop for a knight unless there is a concrete reason. There is, it's okay to keep the tension here among the pieces. That's one thing people, they try to relieve the tension. No, just... Play relatively straightforward chess. Like, we, we don't necessarily want to give up the knight for the bishop, so let's not do it. 
uh, my opponent develops uh, with, with bishop to d3. Now I can play bishop g6, but then again, the knight will take. So check out this idea. I'm gonna play bishop takes knight. My opponent will respond like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my knight to hit that pawn, right? So now this is under attack two times. Okay, now is the part of the game where as the higher rated player, I'm 2700, but if you're 1200, you got to take over. And that means uh, certain exchanges. That means outmaneuvering your opponent with uh, pawn play or peace play. And obviously, okay, so my opponent didn't see my idea, right? Like they just missed that this was the point. Uh, I can probably take with either. Um, let's, uh, I don't know which one is better to take with. I, I guess I'll take with this one. Now, the only thing to remember is if this, then this. But if this, if this, if you do this, they're going to do this. You cannot forget there is another person sitting there, right? Trying to beat you too. So you have to come back with the knight. That's the point. You got to come back with the knight. And I will show you there's actually something even cooler in that position. Uh, but uh, we're 1,200, so we don't know that. Now, I imagine my opponent will go here or castle. I was going to say or castle. Uh, we have a lot of options here. A lot of options. We don't have a lot of forward jumping aggressive moves. But let me just attack the bishop. Like, let me just ask the bishop what's going on. You actually have to take. And there's two second bonus time, so we're, uh, we're not going to be, you know, we're not, we're not going to be losing on time. I'm just trying to get as many games in as I can, all right? I don't want to make you, you know, sit here for like an hour. So knight takes. Okay, I'm a pawn up. I'm a pawn up. I have eight pawns versus seven. So now I got to use my pawns. I want to go here, but that loses that. So be very careful. I'd like to slowly expand my pawns in the center of the board. Okay, first... I'm going to slide my bishop back and attack the queen. That There's nothing wrong with that move, and you seize control of all of this. Um, now I'm going to block, I think, the diagonal of this bishop. This is actually a slight inaccuracy. Let's see if my opponent is able to take advantage. I'm weakening this. That pawn move, right. So let's see if my opponent now sees this. Like, I'm going to play queen e7. Do they see that they can take my pawn? That move opened up the queen. Do they see that? Right, like it looks like, oh, okay, they missed it. So now I'm going to play here and defend that. That was a great move, actually opening up a few things at the same time. Now I think my opponent's getting a little bit desperate. Like they're just trying to throw pawns forward, which is something what people do when they get low on time. Um, all right, I've brought both my rooks to the center. My center is rock solid. Now maybe we try to bust open the king, right? We try to open up the king a little bit, create some sort of attack over there. Bishop H4 is a nice move. I got to block this. I can either put my knight or my pawn. I'm going to play F6. It's not so bad because everything is super held together in my position. It's really not that bad. My opponent can try to poke some holes here with B5, but I don't have to take anything. That actually walks directly into a pin and uh, put pressure on the pinned piece. Now the knight can't move and uh, spotting that tactic is uh, critical. I actually don't even have to take yet, but I... Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, now I guess they're gonna go here. All right, now we can simplify to win a position like this. Up material, knight d3 comes in, hits the queen and the rook. Just tactics here. Like, this person played very, very well, uh, but it was just the tactics that, uh, that ultimately, uh, will, 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 will make them succumb to the pressure. We're gonna simplify now. And now you can just trade a few pawns and trade off the rooks. That's gonna be the most important thing. Trading off a few pawns, uh, rook takes as a free pawn. And let's give a check. And let's do this. This is a, a very nice technique here. Now, the, the easiest way to win... Okay, well, that's actually going to make it a lot easier if they trade rooks with me and trade a few pawns. We are now the, rema you know, the remaining rook on the board, so we're going to get in. And you can, if you really want to, do this. Because the, the opponent is not going to beat you with just the king and pawns. We have the extra bishop. So we're going to gobble. Just be very careful. Don't let them walk into your position and take your pawn. Now you're in good shape. And use your pawn majority here to march it through. So a couple of different phases of the game here. Uh, I'm going to make sure the pawn can't go through and my opponent resigns. That was a very well-played game by my opponent. I got to say, as a 1,000, this person must be like 12, 1,300 rapid, right? I can't see it, but um, I would imagine. I mean, they played a really nice game. Um, they played very, very well. I didn't play super great. You know, I, I, I was just very solid. Um, 
And this maneuver here, my opponent should have defended this pawn with f4. And the game goes on. As you can see, like, it's equal. It's an equal game. So to beat a 1,000 nowadays as a 1,200, it's going to take you, like, move 15, move 20. You know, if you don't catch them, first of all, it's a lot harder to win fast with black. A lot harder to win fast games with the black pieces. Uh, because, um... Because the London is so solid, like, they're not just going to flame out. My opponent, even though they lost the pawn, still was doing more or less okay uh, throughout the position. Like, I, you know, I played a6 to kind of try to, uh, to, 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 to force them to make a decision. I didn't play the best moves, and I wanted to show something here that was kind of funny. If bishop takes d7, I have something called a Zwichenzug. I don't need to take this. Right now, the problem is that I can, I, I can do this, but then this. But the most forcing move in chess, which is why you always look for these, is a check. And the point is that now I remove white's right to castle, and then I take. And this is a pretty bad position for white. Because they can't get rid of my knight because of this. And now they can't castle, which means the rook cannot get into the game. And I am completely winning. So, a very, very high level tactic there. But of course, had we just been playing and I was, you know, simulating being a 1200, emulating, simulating. I don't know which one is the, is the best word. Um... But yeah, listen, I gotta tell you, uh, to, to be a 1200, you've got to, you, you, you've got to beat these 1000s, these like high 900s, low 1000 rated players, and it is not easy. The London is one of these openings that it's very tough to get out uh, to beat quickly. If you want to beat it quickly, you have to play D and C pawns together. The reason is that taking is just not good for white. You can always win the pawn back very quickly. Uh, and if they do this, you can just start to attack them like this. Queen b6 is a very, very provocative way to play. But I got news for you. Even if they defend very passively, the London is so solid. It's just a tough opening to crack, really. So this game was ultimately decided by my opponent making uh, a pawn blunder. They lost the pawn. But then more than anything, uh, they, they missed this chance, by the way. He could have equalized, right? Um, the, the tactical mistakes. Low time, tactical mistakes, pinning yourself... And then after you pin yourself, you walk into a fork. Just two tactical blunders really uh, decided this game. My opponent lost the pawn, pinned themselves, and blundered a fork. But that's like, that's life. You know what? I made a slight inaccuracy as well. The London is, uh, is a very, very tough opening. It is not easy to beat at all. Um, all right. I, uh, I'm trying to start my next game, uh, and uh, I can't, which frequently happens. Uh, so let me maybe jump ahead to the other game. I was going to play three games in today's video, um, but I will, um, I will jump ahead to my third game. And if the second game doesn't start, uh, actually I will play white in this game. I'm going to play white in this game. I apologize for that. I don't want to edit this out. That's okay. Technical error. I did not want to play two games with black because you obviously will get games with white. So let me play e4. Uh, and let's see what happens. All right, so my opponent is playing uh, e5. Now, when you're 1300, right? So the point here is that my opponent is, um, is uh, 1384. If you're trying to be 1200, when you play 1380 rated players, you cannot lose 10 out of 10 games. What, like, if you want to be a rating in chess, you have to not respect that rating. You, you need to fight that rating. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play the Ponziani. I'm going to play an opening that's a little offbeat. And this is the way I like to study chess. I'm going to play an opening that's a little bit offbeat. And I'm going to try to put this pawn in the center. It's, a, it's, it's not the most popular move. Okay, opponent just responds very quickly with knight f6. And now I'm going to play d4. So I'm not playing the most common move. Uh, I'm playing something slightly off the beaten path. So D4 is played. They take. The idea now is we, we go here, and the best move is there. Okay, my opponent plays that move. And you can recapture here. Before I recapture, I will play queen B3. The idea is to attack the knight and target on this diagonal, right? So now the best move for black, really the only move for black is this. Uh, if they go here, I just take. Okay, very good. And now I recapture. Now many people here will go D5, trying to block my queen. Uh, d5 is a bit of an inaccuracy, even though by far it is the most natural looking move. This, the best move is pawn to d6. This is also played quite a lot to try to give a check to me and go here. Very simple. You don't even need to trade. Just keep developing, keep getting pieces. The point is that white has a very, very nice center. 
Um, opponent castle, so they haven't committed this pawn yet. I can do a handful of things here. Uh, I think it's a little too bold to start attacking in the center of the board. But maybe, maybe we can get away with it. Although, I think, unfortunately, there's tactics on the king. So before, it's very, very important that you kind of, like, relax yourself a little bit. In chess, you gotta, you gotta calm down. Like, you, you, you cannot just go to battle right away uh, with, uh, with your opponent. I think what I'm gonna do here is, mate, I'm considering bishop b5, bishop d3, or bishop e2. Um, I like bishop b5 because the idea is to take and take, obviously, but, um, let's, uh, let, let's, let, let's, let's kind of keep it a little bit relaxed. Let's play bishop e2 and try to play short castle. I just don't know yet, right? Like, I, I don't know where my opponent wants to go, and I'm not castled yet, so it's just a good rule of thumb to not overextend all your pieces forward while your king is stuck, uh, in the center. Okay, d5 is played. Now, it's not checkers. As much as Anarchy Chess wants you to believe it, you don't need to take en passant just because you can. Is there any threat to this move? No. Is it worth going a3 and getting this? Maybe, but that's not going anywhere. I want to castle. Let me be principled. Let me castle. I anticipate this move now with the intention of capturing my knight. Okay, that's a little bit passive. No problem. I kind of want to finish my development. What do we think about that? To defend my pawn. I can also play a3 now. Let's play a3 now. If bishop for knight, we take with the pawn so that we have a rock-solid central formation. Notice how our opponent, uh, despite maybe not being completely familiar with the opening, ha still has developed all their pieces in a very natural way and has set them up for success for the rest of the game. In fact, I would not put it past my opponent to go back because I actually think taking here is a bit too committal. You don't need to do that. And I think at this level, maybe intermediate players are like, mm, it's okay to go back. Okay, he decides to take, it's fine. It's not like losing by any stretch of the imagination. But my opponent decided not to waste time. The problem with this, though, is that I have a very, very strong pawn wall now. And more space. Okay, a5, I understand the idea is to go here, but I'm not convinced by this. And I'm, I'm thinking of ways now to start, like, attacking over here. Maybe even knight g5 right away to take the bishop. Um... Let's, let's just put our bishop out, and then I think we're going to start firing away at those weak spots over there. The secret to beating players higher rated than you is to attack them. It's not to play defensively and survive, it's to attack them. Nobody likes to be attacked. Nobody. I don't care if they're 250 points higher rated than you. Watch how quickly my opponent disintegrates uh, with this attack coming. So 97, the idea is to go here. Very smart idea, by the way. I have to, I have to give a lot of credit there. All right, so now we've got the cannons lined up, right? Knight g6, very good move. I have to decide between going forward and backward. Um, I'm going to go forward. I think it's a good idea. Hit the queen, and then we got to play h4, h5, right? We just got to go for it. h4, h5, just attack. We also do have knight h4 to try to trade the knight off and continue this attack. I gotta tell you, knight h4 also looks very interesting. But of course, if you're gonna attack, you should do it with your least valuable piece, right? Which is a pawn. You just... h6, sharp move. Um, we can already consider sacrifices, but I, I think it's a little, little too bold. Let's drop back, and we still have the cannons pointed that way. h5 is, is coming. I gotta tell you, if my queen and bishop were flipped, it would be a bit nicer, because queen h7 would be mate. I don't have that. So right now, we are threatening to take... But believe it or not, it's at, knight c4 is also another very decent move. Very decent. I don't want to trade that bishop. That bishop is useful over there. So h5 now. My opponent is playing really well. Really, really well. I gotta, I gotta give props. Gotta give some serious props here. Um, I was gonna say, I think a lot of people would disintegrate under the attack, but I like how my opponent is playing this. Um, and notice, I mean, I'm still just adding pieces. Like... Same side attacks in chess, which is what I'm doing right now. Same side castling attacks where my king is short castled and their king is short castled. The pawns really are the difference makers. Uh, and sacrificing material to, opening, uh, to, to open the enemy king is very important. This move I'm not super concerned about because, first of all, to replace my dark squared bishop, I already have a bunch of dark squared pawns. And second of all, it would open my rook. F5 is another very good move. Very good move. Wow. That is a seriously impressive move by my opponent. Um, they're looking at f4, maybe. I'm going to go g3. Now, I have nine seconds. 
because I've been talking through the game. Uh, <laughs> I have to speed up. I can't sit here and keep talking. So I'm going to try to make moves first and then talk. Obviously, don't leave yourself with nine seconds versus 45. I'm sort of just doing this to kind of show you the instructional value. I uh, prevent this move. And I think what I'm going to... I'm going to have to find a way to get in there somehow, right? So queen attacks that. Very good move again. I'm going to defend that. Maybe they're going to go bishop f7. All right, b6 is, I think, a step in the wrong direction now. I can rotate my knight over to f4. Let's go here attacking the bishop. Now it's kind of like the uh, go pace. That's under attack now. c6 defending. King g2. I'm going to probably get my bishop out of the way here at some point. Uh, maybe bring my, my, my rooks to this file. Got to be careful, though. That pawn is hanging. I mean, my opponent... <laughs> I, <laughs> this person has played super, super well this game. All right, rook g1. We're still looking to create something there. Let's put our knight on c5. Plug the hole. And we, we definitely have a very menacing position. Uh, trying to like still make g4 happen while wow, we're both trying to run our kings. This is wild stuff. Uh, g4 now. And now we take and we take and things are, things are happening here. So we're breaking through now. We can use our pawn. We've got the pressure. I can take that on passant. And now you, you will not survive this attack. You will not survive rook h6, rook h8. And if queen f5, I'm just taking. Actually, rook h8 is just mate. Uh, should I sacrifice my queen for a checkmate for absolutely no reason? Oh no, my queen! Ah, uh, but that's mate. Okay. <laughs> um, completely unnecessary flashy finish there with queen f5 takes uh, and rook h8 mate. Did you see how much effort I had to put into b to 1400? I mean, seriously, I think this person must be like 17, 1800 uh, rapid, right? 1600 rapid. I mean, this person was really tough. Really, really, really tough. It was not easy to beat this person. I mean, I had a good position for a very long time. I was plus one, plus 1.5. But this just show you, like, it's hard to be a 1200, 1300 consistently. Look who you're up against in Blitz. Right? This is, this is, this is tough stuff. And in the opening, you know, I was just playing like a Ponziani. I, you know, I had a decent position, but... I mean, this person was, uh, was a fighter, was a fighter. Even though I managed to get like the wall and I had a nice position, I tried to create some sort of attack. Person just defended super, super well. I thought I was playing very logically and uh, yeah, they were just doing a very, very nice job uh, defending themselves. And, and I mean, I, I, I sort of did walk you through my thought process of attacking, but h6 was well-timed. Knight c4 was a nice move. And look at this, look at this. They actually got back into the game uh with f5 i mean all the all the all these sharp ideas it's it took a monumental effort to beat this person so how do you beat a 1400 i, I mean still attacking attacking was the way to go like if you're 1200 and you want to beat somebody two 300 points higher than you you still gotta attack but i got news for you you are going to lose games like this and it's going to build your resilience and build your character because these people are so resilient this person did not go away it took me Rated 2760, like 35 moves to finally crack through their defenses. This was not easy at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, chess is hard. It's real tough. Um, I'm gonna, I, I want to end the video uh, playing this person. I, I, I hope they're here. Okay, there they are. Here they are. Um, I, I unfortunately get white again in this game. But let's, uh, let's play d4 this time. Uh, and let's play, uh, instead of a London, let's play a Queen's Gambit. They play the Slav defense. In the Queen's Gambit, get your Knights out, get your Dark Squared Bishop out, like out to f4 or g5. Uh, and then we're going to play e3 to make sure our Light Squared Bishop defends as well. And this is like a 1200 now, right? So we're playing down, we're playing up. Let's see the level, right? In the first game, our opponent played about 15 good moves and then lost the pawn and then started blundering. Last game was a monumental struggle. It was so tough. All right, so my opponent has played a semi-Slav defense here. And now is thinking, um, which is odd. Pawn take c4 is actually the best move. Uh, it's actually the best move. And I think the idea is to go knight c5. I'm going to be shocked if they know that. Um, okay, I'm going to go e4. So anytime in the queen's gambit that your opponent... Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, not bad. Uh, the idea now might be before. I was going to say anytime in the Queen's Gambit, your opponent plays pawn takes c4, your idea should be to go e4. This person clearly, clearly well prepared. Uh, so now Queen c2. The idea of Queen c2 is to support your center. Again, we're supporting our pawns. We want to play bishop e2 in castle. And um, another example of a person that knows what to do in the opening. Black has kind of gotten everything that, that you want. You want this free pawn, uh, and uh, you, you want to hang on to it with b5. However, what Black doesn't have is a center pawn. We're up pawns in the center. Uh, Black's piece is also very kind of blockaded here, right? So we, we got rook d1. We have bishop e2. I think I'm just going to go... I don't know. I mean, I want to go here in castle, right? That's, that's sort of always the idea. Rook d1. Um, I'm going to castle, and I think I'm going to put my rooks in the center of the board. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I see nothing wrong with this move, right? Like, we're just making improving moves. Notice how at this level, we're not trying to jump in and attack our opponent right away. There's a lot of just good chess being played by all three of my opponents. Knight b6, okay. At some point, maybe my opponent is going to want to go here. I don't know when that's going to happen. I kind of want to stop it. But then you got to anticipate this coming too. So maybe b3. Maybe just both rooks in the center for now. There's nothing wrong with, with just activating both rooks on their center lines. Uh, b3 at all times to kind of break that up. d5 is always an interesting idea. Um, we can try to, just like last game, start some sort of attack over there. Jumping the knight into the center of the board is also not a bad move. It's just a good active move. It's defended. It's well supported. And we got to decide what to do with our pieces now. Just like I've mentioned, chess is empty squares and physical pieces. And it's also kind of a battle of pieces and pawns. Which of them is going to be the hero? Like, do you want to walk through into the position? Every single time a piece moves, something happens. Uh, piece moves, right? So now we've got kind of conversation going on here between the pieces. Uh, Knight f7 doesn't do anything. Kind of want to pin my opponent. I kind of like that. So my opponent went here. Now I have some pinning ideas. So now the knight and the queen are sort of interacting. Uh, we're going to slide back. I don't, I don't think taking gives me anything. Taking, there's no fork. Now g5 here would be a massive mistake. It would be an overreaction to the pin, and it would be a big weakening of the position. Actually, I think going back might be best. Okay, a6 is fine. There's nothing wrong with the move a6. Uh... I kind of want to apply a bit more pressure here. I think, you know, I have this interesting idea. I want to trade this pawn and bring a rook to the attack. I'd love to bring a rook up and over, but I can't. So we're going to do it like this. We're down a pawn, but as I've been... Okay, that move loses. Uh, we're down a pawn, but what I was going to say is... Uh, it's... Um, we have what's called compensation. So my opponent is up a pawn, but look at this bishop. Very passive. The knight can't really move... This move forgot about the fact that when I take, suddenly there is this. So completely just forgetting that opening the position comes with risks, which is why it's so important to put your rooks in the center. Because when that center opens, you're going to be staring down the board. And one move just lost the game on the spot. It didn't just lose a pawn. It will, always co it will come with a price tag of a bishop and probably more material. If you go here, I take your queen. But at the end of it, I'm also going to take your knight. So, one pawn move, same exact situation as the 900, 15 good moves, one mistake, and this mistake is actually fatal. Now, here, it's better to take the bishop than the knight. It's just almost always better to take the bishop than the knight, but also in this case, the knight is actually under attack. So, uh, I mean, honestly, rook takes is pretty good, but I like pawn takes. I mean, we're two squares away from queening. How can you not like that? It's such a thorn in the position. Uh, and now that we're up a knight, uh, we're up a pawn and a bishop, a couple of ways here uh, to win the game, get your pieces to the king, and also just simplify. Just simplify down, all right? Get that bishop in there, anchoring that pawn, rook goes to c8, nice move. Counterattack being created here. If you get tunnel vision, you're going to get hit with this move. So yeah, uh, I got to slide out of the way. Rook c8 is an excellent, excellent move, and very, very blunderable. Okay, but unfortunately, my opponent totally on tilt mode and, uh, and loses a piece there. But listen, I, I, I got news for you. I mean, bishop e7, rook c8 was very, very nicely timed. 
And if I got lazy here and played this to go here, suddenly after B4, it, it, it it's it's a game again. I mean, I'm going to lose that night. So um, my opponent pr had a pretty good grasp of their opening, just like the, the, the 1000 did, um, and played very well. I mean, I had to... You know, I was down a pawn in the early going, but I, I played principal chess. I took the center. I put both my rooks in the center of the board. And it's just not an easy opening to play with black. It's just, that's really what it is. And um, I came forward. I kind of reacted to this move by pinning the knight. Uh, the computer here finds a very ridiculous idea. Sacrificing the knight, taking here, and then e5, getting the material back. But it's very hard to evaluate that as... First of all, it's very hard to even see that as a 1200. I thought I played it pretty well, uh, A6, and um, you know I thought B3 was pretty logical, just sort of relieving that pressure. And my plan here was going to be to play something like Rook D3 and rotate. Maybe Knight G4 also decent in some in some future moment, uh, but my opponent sadly blundered right, and the 1400 did not blunder. That was the major difference between these three levels: is that the 900 rated player, the 1000 rated blitz player, you know they they sort of like they they made a elementary blunder. Like in the, in the in the early going, like that pawn. And then obviously as the game opens up, more blunders are going to happen because time gets low. This player played really well. It was just sort of a really tragic mistake that lost them the game. Just the, like it, it happens. The 1400 did not make a single mistake. Like until so much later in the game. So that is what separates these three levels. And to get to 1200, you just have to be a very, very consistent player. You have to minimize your errors and you have to have a good grasp on your openings. You've got to beat up those 1000s seven, eight times out of 10, punish their blunders. Um, you've got to be consistent and beating the 1200 rated players like five out of ten six out of ten times a little bit more than half because obviously that you that's you can't just be losing them to, to them half the time and every now and then you got to put up a huge effort in my opinion you got to attack these 1400s with white and with black and really anybody if you're watching this as a 1600 and uh you want to beat 1800s you got to attack them but you got to scrape some points off of them because if you want to be that level you can't respect that level i hope this was useful um Great games today, really. None of these subscribers fell apart. None of them lost in 10 moves. Uh, really, really great games. And uh, if you enjoy videos like this, let me know. I'll keep making some in the future.